Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kyle Corvus Crow, and I'll be joined on the mic tonight by Reed Rapid Melton. We have an exciting show for you guys, and I'm being told the uh, sound audio did not work out for you on that intro, so I do apologize, but uh, we're going to hop over into some game discussion. Reed, are you with me? I am with you, ready to uh, go into uh, at least what is my first game, casting the uh, actual bracket version of uh, this Yule All Campus series. Oh, it's exciting an stuff. interesting season. And uh, yeah, we've gone through all the all of the uh, the group stages, and now we finally have ourselves a bracket to look at. Oh man! And uh, so some exciting information tonight's match will be. Uh, let me see if I can get it up on your screen. Here it is. I believe the north side of things. We'll just pull up the schedule instead. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Columbia College versus MSU Mangrado. So. That's going to be a fun one. I'm particularly excited because both of these teams showed really great performances in their standings. Uh, I believe it was Minnesota. 5-0 so and 4-1. Yeah, Minnesota State, Mankato, I believe, was the 4-1, and the Columbia yep. College was the 5-0. Was the so some really competitive matches coming out, and uh, that's an exciting part about this bracket, bracket uh, lineup in the CSL. Yep, there are very many uh, exciting factors here uh, to talk about tonight. I think one of the things coming into this is just to give a brief introduction uh, to our uh, to our players, to our teams. Uh, once again, uh, Columbia College, uh, actually a, favor uh, a team that I kind of got to know over the course of this season. Uh, they've got uh, one of the... Uh, uh, collegiate uh, esports uh, like scholarship or opportunities there at the school. Right. Uh, I got a chance to take a look at their uh, gaming setup, which is super sick. Hmm. And uh, of course, it's paid off. They never dropped a game in CSL this season, and so it's just been awesome to see uh, new up and coming collegiate talent. Absolutely, we've seen you know really good teams already that have come in and and dropped games uh, to to other more competitive regions. So for them to go undefeated in a run is absolutely impressive. And we will get to catch a little bit of that because we are actually transitioning over to the picks and bands right now. It's going to be Columbia College on the blue side, Minnesota State, Mankato on the red. All right, and here we go. Uh, Corvus, we're about to get into champion picks and bands. Now, uh, it's going to be kind of interesting because we're still operating on a three-band system. If you guys watch competitive professional mm. play, they're up to five bands, and we'll actually be transitioning to five bands as soon as those hit the live servers. So uh, for now, it's just going to be three bands. That means that there's actually four more champions possible. Uh, they make it through the band phase compared to what you'd see uh, in uh, major leagues around the world. So that offers a lot of exciting opportunities. And one of the things, this is patch 7.4 uh, with the, uh, the hotfix updates in it. So we'll be talking about those a little bit later on, but at least for right now, Lethality, very, very strong, and so you're seeing the majority of uh, uh, champions who would use that probably getting focused in these bands. Absolutely. It's going to be quite AD heavy. Already seeing the Varus come out with the Jin nerfs as well. That's going to be, I mean, there were huge nerfs, but it still is going to be a little, uh, a good amount of pressure onto the ADC pool in general. Looks like the side of Mankato prioritizing that top and jungle, some Rome heavy picks in their bands so far. Excited to see... What's going to come out of this last one? I think, yeah, Rengar Ban, pretty smart one to pick up there. Okay, yeah, so we're going to have both halves of the quest <laughs> banned out, Rengar and Kha'Zix. I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, this next ban was also another lethality AD carry, something like a, maybe Jin. Uh, Jin did get hit with a little bit of a nerf in this patch uh, that makes his ultimate not quite as crazy consistent. Uh, lowers the slowdown on that, and, well, hey, there you go. Jin is the final ban. So I'm expecting an Ash pickup from one of these teams, but the other one, that's going to be into the go for the Ezreal. What's left on the board after that? What's still Ooh. relevant? Into that? Yeah, that's a pretty quick lock-in for okay. the LeBlanc. CC Hollywood saying, hey, I'm, I'm going to do this. Yeah, and I, I agree with the Ash pick, and I was actually uh, listening to... Uh, uh, I am uh, League of Legends caster for Oscar and had some thoughts on this in Europe. Uh, a lot of times teams would not prioritize Ash as highly uh, as, uh, you know, in uh, her and a lot of other experts' uh, opinions they should. I definitely think Ash is kind of the way to go here, especially since, uh, you know, AD carries like Varus very popular because not only do they work well with lethality, but they're also kind of a, a utility AD carry 
Henry, Ash fits the exact same bill. Mm. So um, would expect to see that grow in popularity. We'll maybe talk about that or see how this uh, draft phase works out. But instead, we're going to go with Caitlin poppy uh coming out on the side of uh, minnesota state mankato yeah so i really like actually putting someone like caitlin behind the front line of a poppy i don't think it was as important of a first round draft i would have uh maybe looked to see you know at this point when your enemy team first picks their mid laner you've got a free shot to just kind of pick up whatever counter pick you want it's not like leblanc has a lot of flex potential you can't just pop her into the supporter top role and expect her to perform to the same ability and so <laughs> you say that Corvus, but uh, there was actually a period of time. And I think it was season three where support LeBlanc was not only meta, but expected as a top tier pick. Oh and we've my. also seen top lane LeBlanc. Uh, there are a couple of uh, Chinese top laners who played top lane LeBlanc uh, to, uh, I guess, dubious success. They <laughs> won the games with her, but it was mostly a, hey, look what I can do, aren't I the coolest player? Well, there's another champion that functions well in the top lane, and even though some nerfs did come in, Camille is still insanity oh, when it absolutely. comes to that top lane. And the, the one thing that's actually interesting is that uh, Poppy is a champion that can actually deal with Camille as she does scale up. Right, she's uh, kind of one of the counter picks into that. Yeah, exactly. A Jax may be another one, but uh, that's a little bit disputed. So picking into Poppy, that's a little bit of an interesting choice, although you can see Camille played in the jungle and support roles as well. Mm, absolutely. The draft from the side of Columbia has got me scratching my head a little bit. It's, it's unorthodox to say the least, but, you know, these could be the methods oh. that got them to the very top. And we see a Lulu lock in for the side of Mankato right in response now, to that Nami. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So this is what's a little bit scary. Cogma is the 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 pick that we should be looking for here. Mm. Do I uh, does Columbia want to take that away, uh, or do they want to you know maybe risk giving it over? Uh, it's the kind of the new hotness in solo queue right now. It's Cogma Lulu. It's been around for a little bit, but uh, only recently uh, is it really picking up steam in solo queue, especially in North America. So uh, also a little bit in Europe there as well. So. That's what I'm looking for here. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, you know, the the combo uh, that uh, you know you're going to expect because this time around it's Caitlyn Lulu. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying it's out there, so something to keep an eye on over the rest of this series. Uh, looking for a mid laner to round out our pick phase. Yeah, I'm going to be expecting something really safe here if I'm Gigabyte, just because there are so many threats with Ash Arrow, with the LeBlanc Hop and Pop, with Elise Cocoon. The gank pressure is just insane. So. As a uh, post-level 6 mid laner, I was thinking, yeah, Orianna would be an excellent pick here if they do decide to lock that one in. Nice and safe, can play to a lot of different play styles of are we aggressive, are we defensive, how are we defining that at this exact moment. And they, they actually have a really good composition for that. You know, they're champions that can... Uh, Lulu fits really well into that build. Poppy as well can be a huge front line for your team, or you can have it as, as a, a really good engage tool just depends on how your enemies are playing so they've drafted a really really good uh reactive comp here on the side of mankato so this is really interesting uh you should expect to see uh lots and lots of oriana uh either uh, on one side or the other a uh, pretty uh, strong defensive middle uh laner right now the really interesting thing for me is going to be the uh, uh shield combinations that you can have uh, out of uh, what i'm being told is mankato so apologies for a little bit of inexperience and pronunciation there on my part, but uh, you've got uh, basically three of them. You've got Poppy's Buckler, and then you also have uh, the Command Protect uh, from Orianna and then Lulu Shields as well, so you can really combine those into some pretty cool combinations. Would have liked to see that like really all end on, but these are our picks for uh, our first game of the night. It's going to be uh, Camille versus Poppy top lane, Elise versus Rek'Sai in the jungle, LeBlanc versus Orianna in the mid lane, Ash versus Caitlyn and Nami against Lulu. So really cool to see some Lulu support coming back in. And of course, it'll uh, be interesting to see how Camille functions here on patch 7.4. Absolutely. We got some three minute delay to tick through. So I'm going to turn over to a couple quick commercials from our sponsors and we'll get back right after this. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. But let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. 
With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band, be together. All right, those were a couple quick words from a couple great sponsors, Asus and Band. I want to take a quick second to tell you about Band. Great social app, the primary social app of the CSL. Tons of features such as creating groups, which can be good for your CSL team or club, boards, calendar functions, polls, chat, and as a recent call functionality, Band is a premier social experience for you and your fellow gamers alike. You can find out more at band.us slash home. Another one you just saw there was Asus. We want to welcome Asus to the CSL family for the 2016-2017 season. Provider of everything esports from all their wonderful products such as monitors, laptops, routers, graphics cards, motherboards, and plenty more. Don't enter your next battle unless you're equipped with Asus. And one more sponsor that we didn't get to feature on the commercials there is Twitch. I want to say nothing but gratitude to the largest streaming platform in gaming to support collegiate esports from PAX East and West and many more events in the CSL. We wouldn't be what we are today without the help and support of them. Please be on the lookout for cool opportunities to get involved with Twitch in the near future and be sure to show them some love for their support on twitter.com slash twitch and facebook.com slash twitch. Great organizations. Yeah, definitely super big fan of all of our sponsors, Band, Twitch, and Asus or Asus like Dr. Seuss, if you want to pronounce it that way. Uh, love having them uh, help out with our collegiate esports. And, of course, a big thanks to everyone who coming who is coming out and tuning in uh, to tonight's uh, broadcast. It's going to be one best of three now and then immediately followed uh, by another best of three broadcast uh, at uh, 7 p.m. PST. So while we load into the game, we are going to leave you. Until then, thanks for watching. Feels bad, man. Indeed, it does. And uh, I do want to give a big welcome to everyone tuning in uh, to what represents the start of the ULL Campus Series playoffs. Uh, if you guys want more information on these playoffs, make sure to check out our CSL show Bracketology, which you can do by typing exclamation mark Bracketology in chat. So I just want to give you guys that little bit of info. If you want to know what's up with the playoffs or submit your own thoughts on how you think the brackets are going to play out, that's how you do it. So let's go ahead and talk about our level ones here, Corvus. We're going to see a deep invade here uh, by Columbia. They are going to look for some deep vision and possibly a level one.
that's how I go into every single one of my games uh, of League of Legends. I'm just like, well, you know, this could be disastrous, but it could also work out. And when it does, uh, it's pretty cool. So let's take an eye on how each of our junglers are starting out. I've got RJ, the Elise there on Columbia, starting at uh, the Rays, and uh, getting a little bit of help, both junglers making friends with their duo lane. Uh, letting Ash get into lane a little bit ahead of schedule, though. So waiting in the brush won't go for any level one cheese or anything like that. Just going to go ahead and start out with standard lanes. And uh, I haven't exactly seen these two exact team compositions uh, before. I'm sure they've been played at least sometime out there. Uh, but primarily, this should actually be a fairly difficult lane for uh, Ransack Moose and Wicklebear. Another word I've actually just never said before in my life. Um, but with the level two shove, definitely in Artemis and Dean's favor, uh, they should be the ones up against their turret for at least uh, a little bit. And so at least what I'm going to be looking for, especially considering that we have a defensive mid laner uh, here for uh, Minnesota State Mankato, uh, is going to be jungler impact on things, especially that top lane. Okay. Yeah, I really want to give a big shout out to Hollywood there, who actually flashed the flash uh, reactively just to make sure that the uh, the tether from his ethereal change would latch. And when it did, uh, you're not really going to be able to get out of that. And uh, to his credit, Gigabyte actually did go for the cleanse summoner spell, but even that wasn't enough to make sure he uh, got out alive. So maybe a uh, barrier would have kept him alive long enough to escape, but I think cleanse was the right one to take in that situation. Uh, just too good. Uh, of a combo there for Columbia, and they will take down that first blood. All right, well, it appears as if you're muted, Corvus, so if you want to go ahead and uh, hook yourself up there, uh, we'll go through and look at what could be second blood, and there it is, Hollywood, picking up his second kill of the game. Well, that is embarrassing. Yeah, the side of my mic was just not working, so. All right. Well, it fixed a little bit of a technical issue there with a the cable, but we're back in and ready to go, so. Okay, all right. So let us, uh, let us know, guys. Uh, we should be having as much audio going your way as possible. Uh, I recognize that, you know, maybe just my melodious toy tones were not enough so now we've got two casters and that yeah. should be working out i apologize so, uh, for being also, in my i was actually really excited about the start of this game i was gonna say uh, I, I was really excited so maybe i was excited enough for both of us mm. uh, either way let's go ahead and catch up with what's going on we've got a uh, air dragon taken and a trip Ooh, back down yeah. the bottom half of the map the big gank on a ransack yeah, they're going in. They're going to find Wickle Bear there with yet another beautiful chain of CC there. The Nami bubble right into the cocoon, just keeping him there as long as they possibly can. And it does secure yet another kill, bringing the total up to five in just six short minutes here. And so the side of Columbia is wasting no time on this one. RJ's been a monster around this map. Certainly has been. And this is kind of par for the course if you guys remember the last time we got a chance uh to see columbia play that was uh, i believe two weeks ago uh when i was casting their games there uh they also are coming off of a very strong recent land performance there in the midwest as well um this is uh what you should expect to see pretty dominant it's been difficult to find 
uh, teams that can really match up with them one on one and off to a very strong early start in the, exactly the lanes uh, we were talking about being so important. Mm. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing that worries me if I am the side of Mankato right now is that Gigabyte has drafted that defensive uh, that defensive mid laner in Oriana and has said, hey, I'm going to play this one safe and has already given up two deaths. And that's a pretty demoralizing position to be in. So just from the state of mental fortitude, hopefully this guy can hold it together throughout the game because they got a long best of series to go. And that is the good news, right? If you're ever down five kills, you can take a deep breath and go, well, it's it's early game and it's just a best of series. We're, we're, we're still still in game one here. I mean, I've definitely seen series uh, more, you know, far out of control than this one. Uh, turn around. Usually it happens around uh, the Baron buff and mm. one team goes for it when they shouldn't. That'll be a little bit off uh, of a ways off now that we are, uh, you know, only seven and a half minutes into the game. Definitely feels like a little bit uh, longer. Mm. So I don't know about you. Whenever I see games like this, you know, it's time to sort of play the uh, the calm, cool, collected, defensive game and maybe look for ways to catch your opponents off guard uh, like we could see from here to improve in the bottom lane. Absolutely. You see a lot of teams, when they get these early advantages, uh, start to get a little bit cocky with them. And so if the side of Columbia is getting disrespectful in any degree, uh, the tools are definitely there to punish it from the side of Mankato. And I think that... Shows a little bit in just the way Misty Stumpy took a free tower shot from Batman there and effectively lost the trade for it, so good run. But, man, it's it's an uphill battle with this RJ guy. He's all over, clear and vision, ganking lanes, and even when they're poking him down, he's got friends there to pick him right back up. Wow, uh, I just saw Misty Stumpy up in the top lane use that tactical sweep and heal for over 100 Ooh. HP just by hitting Feels Batman. Camille, what a champion. Uh, no nerfs currently on this patch. I believe there's uh, recent ones proposed for the next one, but uh, certainly very strong and using that oh, strength. Now, looking nice. to coordinate a dive down on the bottom half of the map. and Oh, a nice cancel on the teleport from Misty Stumpy. Uh, feels Batman did use Keeper's Verdict to stop that from coming through and trying to get RJ out there in the bottom lane. But meanwhile, we've got a lot of action in mid. Absolutely. It looks like they're trying to get up on the Gigabyte again. He does have both those summoners up. Shockwave comes out, but... No, I'm sorry. No, it does not. I thought it did. Was wrong on that one. Wouldn't be the first time. Top lane suffering a little bit of a gank. Not going to be too bad, actually. Misty Stumpy tempted for this 2v1 here. We'll see with the roam up coming out from Hollywood. I don't know if they're going to go for that one or not. I, I can't believe here to improve actually flashed away from Misty Stumpy. Mm. It is a 2v1. And if you play that CC well enough, I think you can turn that around. But elsewhere, of course, on the map. And of course, we got to keep an eye on top lane because RJ's still trying to make plays there. Uh, bottom lane, it's Artemis that's playing that very, very uh, cautiously. Let's put it that way. <laughs> very brave Ash player getting way up in Wicklebear's face. Certainly hard to follow a team around the map when they're just going to pressure this much action all at once. Uh, but it is a lovely thing to see. I'm, I'm always a fan of games with this much action, and the early 3K gold lead at just 10 minutes is a story in and of itself for just how bloody the first five minutes of this game were, and I don't think it's actually bloody enough for Columbia, right? Because we saw them trying to put more on the board just when they went for that really early run into the invade and uh, hope to pick up a lot there through their gank that almost went off in the top lane when they were trying to collapse there. They're just ready to go to the four corners of the map for this blood. I love it. Imagine playing on a map with more than four corners, Corvus. I, I feel Pentagon. like that's a, a future. Actually, I, I guess uh, if you count uh, maps like, uh, what was it? Um, man, they removed it from the uh, the map pool, and I already forgot the name of it. Uh, it was um, Dominion's map, was it? It was, yeah. It was uh, the Crystal Dominion. Scar. No, yeah, Crystal Scar. There we go. I guess mm. that is a map with more than four corners. Oh, man. That's, We're uh... going to see some engage coming on. Ransack Moose is in trouble. The Shockwave <laughs> hits, but it's not going to do anything. Has to self-ult, but we'll get flashed on to go down. That's going to be the Rampage. RJ trades his life under tower for it. The shutdown comes through, and it's a one-for-one one thus far, but a little bit of too much aggression from Columbia's jungle tips it slightly in the favor of Mankato if they can't go further. That's another one for Hollywood going in very deep and almost dying for it, forced to flash over. <laughs> oh, Aggression certainly punished here. 
I mean, I'm not sure if those were special effects or if Hollywood's just trying to make himself look good, mm. but barely escaping alive. I don't know. It was a little bit, uh, a little bit of a show off, and I guess you know maybe living up to his name in that regard. <laughs> Absolutely, definitely flashy play coming out from Hollywood. Both summoners burn, trying to get some uh, faker highlight reel portions on the board, and who could blame him? Yikes. All right. Well, you know, maybe uh, nothing ventured, nothing lost. Is that how the saying goes? I don't know, but it's close enough. Hmm. Uh, so mid lane is a matchup that we talked about being, uh, you know, a, a good opportunity for Gigabytes Oriana to play defensively, and that really just did not work out. Now, mm -hmm. he does have the sole Ooh. kill for his team, but uh, now it actually might need his help. Uh, to avoid ganks like we saw almost happening with RJ going up top lane though that's where the action's at. Absolutely tensions are building as the top laners health bars are getting low neither with teleport accessible that will be Stumpy's before feels Batman's but looks like both teams are starting to purport around this dragon both junglers on the bot side of the map it is RJ that's been found by here to improve though and will have to give some respect to that one or maybe not they want to try to find Wicklebear with some really good CC coming out through Dean but it's a question of how far they're going to push this. The last time they did, things got a little hairy for them. So I think they want this dragon, but I'm not sure how much they're willing to commit for it. Yeah, so RJ's early aggressiveness uh, really did help pay off for his team. Since then, we've seen him try to make these sort of game-ending plays hmm. where you get an uncontrollable snowball go uh, rolling, uh, but they really just have not worked out for the most part. Now, we continue to see Hollywood going for these very deep uh, sort of checks to see, hey, what's out there? Are there opportunities for me to uh, you know, pick somebody off? So he's hmm. going deep into the enemy jungle for wars, try to catch out here to improve. Uh, he's also just, like, staying... Uh, sort of stealthy on the side of the mid lane to maybe catch uh, Gigabyte if he comes out of position. Everybody here from Columbia looking for those opportunities to really get the snowball rolling. Absolutely, and they're like vultures, just picking off what they can from the side of Mankato, taking away little objective snowball on those into bigger objectives. It looks like Second Cloud's gonna go over uncontested to the side of Columbia here, and they'll take that pretty freely meanwhile it looks like hollywood may actually try to get a kill here not going to go for the tower dive they are going to find wickle bear though with that arrow with the cc coming up it's so much burned onto him but it's certainly a kill despite the lulu ultimate they're going to keep going for this one tower shot one and two hits rj while artemis is just freely picking up the kills there and they're going to run out scot free for that one well, I don't know who Scott is or why he's so <laughs> inexpensive, but the top lane's where the action's at. Feels Batman. And he lives through the trade. Absolutely beautifully played from Batman to prove he is the Dark Knight that top lane needs. Yeah, definitely the hero for his team there, doubling up their kills and really just impressively well played there. Able to pick up that buckler to tank the one last turret shot to not only get in and get the kill, but also get out alive. Very, very inspiring copy play and uh, possibly a tip of the hat to why they drafted this in the first round. Says, hey, look, this is what I can do. I'm going to show you what I got. This is a champion that I'm not afraid to pick in blind. You play whatever you want. You take the quote-unquote OP Camille, and I'll fight you on it anyway. Uh, yeah, and that's one of the reasons that Poppy does fare very well against Camille. Uh, Poppy gets a lot of va uh, value off of Hammer Shock because Camille does want to get up there and you know get the uh, Sheen empowered uh, auto attack procs off. And anytime you want to fight Poppy, she's maybe going to land that second uh, shock from uh, from Hammer Shock, and of course able to just get super super tanky, build all those defensive items that you need against Camille and still put out a lot of damage. Very, very well played. Feels bad, and really uh, not letting Misty Stumpy get away with anything. Uh, oh, Gigabyte's in trouble here yet again. Really good shockwave to pull two under tower and should actually stall things out, but Stumpy's on to Wickle Bear here in the bot lane, and that's not going well for the AD of Mankato there. That will be taken out pretty cleanly as the lane swap is in full effect. Ash pushing this top lane tower down. Yikes. Yeah, this is Camille starting to do hashtag things Camille does uh, right on top of an unprotected AD carry. Not going to go well. Now, mm. one thing that is going well, we got to keep an Ooh. eye on the mid lane there. Gigabyte. Oh, my God, RJ. Take it Massacre. out. Whew. Yeah, that is not good. Did have the flash up, said, you know what? I probably can't get out anyway. We'll just run with this one and uh, suffers for it. Third death for the Mankato mid laner and... 
a tough pill to swallow when your opponent is two up. Here to improve is taken right out very quickly. They are going to... No! Get away with the flash, maybe. RJ not able to secure that one up. Dean as well now in a precarious position. They're going to have to call forward for the teleport. Hollywood is up there. The knock away will find only one, and it is just the support. The damage is there, and feels Batman. Feels nothing at all as he has gone to the grave. A tower, the prize for Columbia. They will take that one down as their second turret of the game, Corvus, and continue their push up through the top half of the map. A uh, little bit unfortunate uh, there uh, for Minnesota State. Mankato losing their very powerful, very tanky top laner. Mm -hmm. Now continuing their siege on the second tier turret. We'll see if Wickabear and Gigabyte can push them back. Right, the damage is still a threat from the side of Mankato. They have a lot to poke behind the defense of this tower, even if they don't have the tank line for it. They can't extend too much. Rek size there, but can't find it. Mr. Stumpy on the run from this one, and it looks like Mankato wants a full-blown chase. Yeah, here to improve is going to try for that cheeky Prey Seeker snipe, but with a teleport in, feels Batman could still turn this around. Absolutely, they've already found one. RJ should be the second, goes over to the support of Lulu. Moose takes a kill, puts it in his back pocket. That's going to be some much welcome gold for the support there. And... Mm. At least a good salvage from the side of Mankato to say, hey, look, you're not going to push this tower down. We have a plan to stop you. And the teleport from the back from Fields Batman proved that, you know, they can still be a big threat to this Columbia side. Yeah, you can really see it. And then this is what you really have to do when you are very far behind is just say, hey, everybody makes mistakes. So not letting the opposing team get away with anything like overextending like that when they don't know the teleport timing of the opposing top laner. And feels Batman not only winning his 1v1, but also coming up big and uh, helping out the rest of his team, allowing them to pick off those very much needed kills. Absolutely. Poppy's the kind of champion you can put an early kill on to, and then she'll be good. She's relatively low economy in this meta, and so, you know, one or two kills on Poppy might be all she needs. She doesn't need to snowball a lane like some other champions, and so... Uh, just getting that early Sunfire and Ninja Tabby and then being a front line for your team is maybe all you need, but here to improve could be caught out on this one. Looks like they're going to Looks like away. going in deep. Misty Stumpy starting the fight off Ooh. and not stopping until he is able to pick up a kill there on a Ransack moves and uh, going to be able to get the blue buff on the backside of that. Uh, Dragon coming up in just about 45 seconds, so unless uh, unless Minnesota State can get back into position, then this is just not going to go their way. No, and I feel like we just saw this strategy six minutes ago from the side of Columbia. Mm. Come in, invade the blue buff, get ready for Dragon. This time they were a little bit ahead of their timing. I don't know if they expected the scrappy little engage that they got, but it doesn't matter because they can just pressure out that mid lane tower. Stall for time. Big red flag for me here is Ash still in the top lane. No way of joining this fight if it breaks out. Yeah, also as Ash, you do want to you know keep in mind the same thing that uh, I guess uh, Wicklebear on the other side of Minnesota State did not keep in mind is that at any time as an AD carry, you get caught out in a lane too far out by yourself, you're not going to have uh, a good time. So glad to see rejoining now the team sitting in the mid lane, uh, the rest of the team coming to uh, protector so for Columbia they're really just dotting all their eyes crossing all their Ooh. T's staying together in a big catch again nice cleanse coming out from gigabyte that's exactly what we talked about ash arrow to the face cocoon doesn't matter I'm out of here love it yeah I, honestly I don't think you needed to blow both of your summoner spells either you flash the arrow or you cleanse it off and just walk away but better safe than sorry maybe uh, summoner spells doing what they are made to do and keeping Gigabyte alive, but not enough to uh, defend the dragon there. Good engage, pushes uh, Minnesota State back, and that allows Columbia to pick up their second, or third rather, dragon of the game. Yeah, that's a trade Columbia will take any day of the week. Okay, yeah, toss out an ultimate and some CC. You cleanse it, whatever. We don't need the kill. We've got the Mountain Drake right around 20 minutes when it's getting to uh, one of the most potent points it's going to be in the game. There's still plenty of standing towers to take down. The Baron is now officially an objective that these oh, teams no, have to consider. <laughs> and feels Batman is going to feel Batman if he can't get out of this one. His team is there to rally around him, and they get him out okay, it looks like. But I don't know if they want to continue following this one or not. It looks mm -hmm. like they're trying to find RJ. The health bars are getting kited out pretty well here, though. 
Uh, yeah, good positioning there by RJ. He's, he's really had that sort of mindset where he's just like, look, I'm going to try to catch somebody out. I'm going to try to go for these big plays to uh, you know, get the snowball rolling. And he's still trying to make those hashtag big plays when he uh, was waiting there in the jungle. Now, a uh, good conservation from Fields Batman. And now, oh, top lane Hollywood. Mm, beautiful. Some extra help. But Nope is able to get the turret kill and get out alive. He's going to be just fine on that. Meanwhile, Ash did take that mid lane tower as well. Ooh, Arrow finds Ransack Moose. That's the exhaust onto the clone. Not what you want. Hollywood's on the spree. Mr. Stumpy's taking a tower on the other side of the map. They're going for Caitlyn as well. They find her in the top lane and skirmishes all across the board. Coming out in favor of Columbia. Gigabyte, the only one alive, preventing that cross map ace. Ooh, ouch. That's, that was uh, two, three towers in the span of 60 seconds there? Uh, yeah, not only the turrets, but also the kills, and more to come here as well. It's not really just the kills, it's what you do with them, and really lots of great opportunities here as uh, Columbia continue to push through the base, and how even Gigabyte might not be safe. Look at that damage from Hollywood. Ooh, so close, but the Lulu is there to help ensure the smooth exit ransack Moose. Showing his antlers, saying, back it on off there, pal. They're gonna try to push back this, but the inhibitor's gone. The teleport's coming through. Feels Batman could be a little far too behind enemy lines, and he's in his own base. Does get a great knockout to keep Stumpy away from this fight, but it's really only a band-aid over this huge gap in their front line right now. Wow, sometimes it looks a lot like feels Batman versus the world. He's uh, you know going in winning hard matchups in his lane. He's helping his team get these big engages that they need. And he's going in like 1v3 like that, surviving, staying alive, but even still his team uh, really unable to capitalize off the back of that. So uh, I just got to say, Corvus, it's looking a little bit rocky here as we crest the 23-minute mark. What, uh, what really has to go through Minnesota State's mind is maybe not, you know, totally thinking about next game just yet, uh, but saying, okay, well, what can we do here to try to figure our opponents out and maybe even catch them off guard? Right. They, they broadcast a couple clear strategies just throughout this game as well. They want to go for very early aggression. So if you can find a jungler in your next round draft that is able to keep up, pace for pace and it's hard because so many were banned out uh but if you can maybe force that out with a kha'zix ban oh goodness they're already coming through hollywood is way back into the lines finds wickle bear there's not enough peel or shield to keep him alive from that one and it looks like they still want to break this out gigabytes the next target but stumpy a little too far back here not sure he wants to fight three versus one does stall out the time for his team to take the tower though Yikes. Okay, well, three versus one's not things that AD carries are uh, meant to do. Uh, a lot of times I hear people lamenting the strength or lack thereof of AD carries, Corvus, and I just mm. think to myself, well, you know, exactly in what situations are these these AD carries not strong? I feel like some people complain, you know, oh, I was, you know, Ooh. an AD carry at 24 minutes, I wasn't able to 1v5. Well, you're not really supposed to be able to do that. Uh, so Wicklebear out of position gets t taken down, and here to improve might need to improve a little bit because he uh, kind of just got bopped on by Hollywood, who's now 6-0 and 4, and together, collectively, 20 now kills uh, here for <laughs> Columbia. They look to close out game number one around 25 minutes. Actually, good guy Poppy knocking back Stumpy away from the fountain says, hang on now, you don't want to die to that laser, just get back. 25-minute game, very good. Very quick and convincing win with a 16k gold lead to the side of Columbia. Biggest thing I think here separating these two is the side of Mankato wasn't actually able to even pull a tower out of that. And that that hurts. Uh, yeah, big difference coming from uh, the jungle position. RJ just really, really jungling circles around here to improve. I got to say, though, uh, not flawless uh, from uh, from Columbia. They did have that uh, one big, not quite a comeback, but feels Batman with the teleport in, flanking their team and allowing his team to pick up two more kills. Uh, some signs of life here uh, from Minnesota State Mankato, but we'll have a chance to see exactly how alive they will be as we take a quick break and get into our second game of the night. Once again, big thanks to our sponsors. Uh, you can see them there on your screen, Band Gaming, Asus, and Twitch uh, for allowing us to uh, you know, continue to bring you 
great collegiate esports. So stick around. We've got game two of our ULOL Campus Series playoff match between Columbia College and Minnesota State Mankato coming up next.